Grammar basics. Punctuation. The basic punctuation marks, which you already know, are the period exclamation point or exclamation mark, question mark, and the comma. Let's take a look at the period. The period is used to end sentences that are declarative or imperative. You can also use it for mild exclamations like, how sweet it is to be loved by you. Here is an example of a period at the end of a declarative sentence. That was the example. Here are other examples. My cat's name is Will. You have made a mess. That was a terrible movie. Below are examples of a period at the end of an imperative sentence. Please clean your room. Pass me the salt. Don't put the ketchup back yet. A period is also used to punctuate abbreviations, such as Mr., Mrs., etc., Ph.D., and verses. Note, do not punctuate abbreviations that are written in all capital letters. Now let's take a look at the exclamation point. The exclamation point is used to end sentences that are passionate commands or exclamations. Here's an example of a passionate command. Duck, never speak to me again. Here's an example of an exclamation. What big ears you have. How cute he is. An exclamation point can also be used after an interjection, such as yippee or oh no. Exclamation points are also frequently used after passionate declarative sentences although this convention shouldn't be used for formal writing. I love that movie so much. Now for the question mark. The question mark is used at the end of a sentence that is a question. Here are examples. What do you want for dinner? Whose socks are on the floor? Which movie do you want to watch? The comma. The comma is not end punctuation. Rather, it is used within sentences to separate some, but not all, phrases, clauses, appositives, coordinating adjectives and adverbs, interjections, and words in a series. It also is used to separate cities from states, name suffixes, salutations from the main body of a letter, and information and in quotation marks. Commas have many uses. Here are some examples. When you go to the store, comma, buy more milk. So that we have a dependent clause before the independent clause. I want my cake, comma, but I want to eat it too. And there you have it preceding a coordinating conjunction, but and separating two independent clauses. The flag is red, comma, white, comma, and blue. So that's uh, words in a series. Emily, comma, my best friend, comma, moved away. Uh, my best friend is in a positive. My husband, comma, whom I love, comma, bought me a ring. Whom I love is also in a positive. Golly, comma, I didn't realize this was your cat. That's separating an interjection from the rest of the sentence. I am from Meredith, comma, New Hampshire, separating a city from a state. Martin Luther King, comma, Jr. was a civil rights activist. And so there the comma is separating the suffix Jr. from the rest of the name. You need to read this book, comma, insisted Jenny. And so a comma takes the place of a period at the end of a quote or uh, preceding a quote within one sentence. The old, comma, creaky door was gaping open. So there, the comma is being used for coordinating adjectives. That would be adjectives that if you swapped them around, uh, it doesn't affect the meaning of the sentence. So we could say the creaky old door was gaping open and it doesn't affect our understanding. And so we put a comma between old and creaky. Dear Sally, comma, I got your letter. Sincerely, comma, Jasmine. And so there we see it after salutations. All right, now we're going to take a look at the less common punctuation marks. That would be the colon, the semicolon, hyphen, n dash, m dash, and ellipsis. 
The colon is used after complete sentences, when the information that follows the colon adds to our understanding of the information before it. I need to buy some new clothes, colon, several patterned blouses, a pair of pants for work, and some yoga pants. The colon is also used to introduce a list after a complete sentence. Here is an example. He has all the qualities of a good dog, loyalty, obedience, friendliness. The colon is also used in time, such as 3.30, between a title and a subtitles, Star Wars colon, The Force Awakens, and after a salutation and a business letter, to whom it may concern colon. Lastly, the colon is used before some quotes. I try to keep in mind St. Teresa of Calcutta's wisdom, colon, do small things with great love. The semicolon. The semicolon is primarily used to separate phrases or clauses in a list and to separate independent clauses, which are complete sentences, without the use of a conjunction. So our first example, the council resolved to spend fewer taxpayer dollars, semicolon, implement a new program to encourage recycling, composting, and reducing waste, semicolon, and purchase new equipment for the park. So there we have really long phrases in a series, and because within some of those phrases, such as the second one, there are commas already. If we simply used commas to separate the items in that series, it would get very, very confusing. Our second example, you need a new shirt, semicolon, that one is full of holes. So here you have two independent clauses, you need a new shirt, that one is full of holes. But they're very closely related, and so instead of using, um, for example, uh, comma four, you need a new shirt, for that one is full of holes, making it uh, a comma coordinating conjunction, we use the semicolon instead. The hyphen. So there are three punctuation marks in the dash family. The hyphen, the m dash, and the m dash. They are very often confused not only in their purpose, but in how they are physically written. The hyphen is the shortest. It separates parts of a word. It is used for some compound words, but not all. There's no hard and fast rule, unfortunately, but a hyphen is more likely to be used for uncommon combinations of words, combinations of three or more words, and combinations of words and numbers. So some examples of hyphenated words, jack-o'-lantern, mother-in-law, eye-opening, email, 26-year-old, five-minute mysteries, low-income housing. And uh, the hyphen is also used for two digit numbers above 21, such as 54 or 99. The N dash is one of the most misunderstood punctuation marks. It is longer than a hyphen, but shorter than an M dash. It is essentially one and a half hyphens long. On an on screen keyboard, you can type the N dash by pressing and holding the hyphen. The other dash options will then appear. You select the one in the middle. On a computer, you usually have to go to insert and then choose symbol and find it and insert it as a special symbol, which is not very easy to do, but it's worth it. The N dash is used to punctuate ranges in lieu of the word to. So for example, pages five to eight. Uh, most people write a hyphen here, it actually is properly punctuated with the N dash, or September 19th to 21st, 1786 to 1803, 3.30 to 5 o'clock, all of these should have an N dash in the middle of their range, and it doesn't just have to be between numbers. Uh, if I wanted to say from May to October, and use the N dash rather than the word to, I would use that N dash. Uncommonly, the N dash can also be used in place of a hyphen if something is being added to a compound phrase. That's a very narrow uh, 
scope of when that's possible, but an example would be I enjoy going to stores pre-back-to-school shopping when I'm not reminded of work. So pre-back-to-school shopping. Quite a wordful. Since back-to-school is hyphenated, we put an N dash before adding on to that already hyphenated word. The M dash. So the M dash, also simply known as the dash, is the most common and most versatile of the dashes. It's also the longest, properly written as twice the length of a hyphen. On computers and most programs, you can easily type it by placing two hyphens and no space between the words. And so typically the two hyphens then merge and auto format into an M dash. Uh, just like you could with the N dash, if you have an on-screen keyboard like on your phone, you press and hold the hyphen and you'll have the M dash will be one of the options that pops up. The M dash is used to offset or emphasize words or phrases within a sentence. So I opened the door and saw them. Trick or treaters. The M dash, my favorite punctuation mark, is far too underutilized. The M dash is also used to indicate a sudden and harsh break in dialogue. This is contrasted to the use of the ellipsis, which we'll discuss next. You, you monster, he cried. What you need to do, now don't take this personally, is, you know what, never mind. So in those examples of dialogue, there were kind of sudden abrupt changes in the dialogue. And so to show that they're sudden, we use the M dash. Which brings us to the ellipsis. The ellipsis for thing is frequently written incorrectly it is made up of three periods, each separated by a space from each other and separated by a space from adjacent words. So you have your word, then you do space, period, space, period, space, period, space, before you move on to the next word. Uh, most people know that the ellipsis is used when a sentence intentionally ends with an incomplete idea, usually for suspense, Dialogue drifts off or for a soft dramatic pause, whereas an intense dramatic pause, you would use the M dash. It can also be used when dialogue or a quote does not start at the beginning of a sentence. The ellipsis is not end punctuation. This means that when it ends a sentence, you still need to add a period, exclamation point, or question mark. These are added after a space. So if you see an ellipsis and it's four periods long, it should be at the end of a sentence. If it's only two, or sorry, if it's only three periods long and it's at the end of a sentence, you need to add one more. So, for example, ellipsis, uncommon choice of meat. I overheard one man as he and a friend came around the corner. So presumably, that was not the start of the sentence, so that shows that they were mid-conversation. The house overlooks a cliff, and many say it may be haunted. So it adds a little bit of like a spookiness to the pause versus the M dash, which is more sudden. I remember a time when... And the sentence ends there, even though the thought is not complete. And so because it ends with the ellipsis, it's an ellipsis, space, and then the end punctuation. If it were a question that word was drifting off and never got finished, it would be an ellipsis, space, question mark. Um, I guess you wouldn't really have an ellipsis, exclamation point, because if you're drifting off, you're probably not exclaiming. At any rate, uh, that is the ellipsis. Those are the punctuation marks. I hope you have learned something new and uh, you'll go out and use these punctuation marks and you can confidently and correctly.